Hi, I'm Jen Polans, Managing Editor of Green Profit. You're watching Trending Now, where we bring you hot products for retail sales. Today, I'm joined by Ryan McEnany. He is Marketing and Communications Manager for Bailey Nurseries. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So today, we are going to talk Popstar. Yes, we are so excited. So, so excited to talk about Popstar. So this is a new introduction into the endless summer line of hydrangeas for Bailey Nurseries. And tell us a little bit more about um, how this came about and um, what retailers can expect for this year. Sure. So like anything in the endless summer collection, Popstar is a reblooming garden hydrangea, hardy to zone four. Uh, we're super excited about it because we... To introduce something in the summer, we want to be really certain that it lives up to that brand promise. And so we've done a lot of trialing and testing to make sure that it truly is. And Popstar is like setting all the new standards for us. So you can see here, one of the things that's really incredibly important is that it is such a massive Rebloomer, because <clears throat> the blooming on on any hydrangea, especially an endless summer hydrangea, is so important. But the fact that it can rebloom and bring additional sets of flowers all the way through fall, or if you're in a cold climate and those buds get zapped in winter, for them to come back and flower really is that special sauce, right? So in this slide, we show that we went through some really hard cutback trials, and this is how we know if that remotency or that reblooming trait is truly a part of the gene of the plant. So you can see that incredible flush of first set of flowers in early June. So that old wood is really, really powerful. Cut back to like two to four inches. And then what we were really testing is when we get to that next set of buds. And we saw that within two to four weeks, faster than any other hydrangea macrophylla uh, that we did trialing on. So what that really means is that Popstar is setting the new standard for reblooming. So this, you can see some of the data from uh, David Roberts and his team down at Bailey Innovations in uh, Athens, Georgia, where all this trialing work was done. This is showing how many of those blooms are set in fall. So again, that is that rebloom. You can see the flowers next to it, absolutely covered. So... This is the new standard, huge, 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 massive bloomer. That is one of the first reasons that we are excited about Popstar. This is another really important piece of it, is that cold hardiness. Because again, having a zone for cold hardy hydrangea macrophylla is sort of like that holy grail, right? Mm -hmm. And to have something that actually can live up to that is really important. And for for Endless Summer, to be able to have that and, and show with some data, some real life examples of that happening is important. And so here's some pictures from our trial block in Cottage Grove, Minnesota, zone four. We do nothing to these. They are planted in an open field. We don't give them winter protection. If they survive, they survive. If they don't, they don't. So I was actually talking to David, our breeder, this morning about when this initial selection of Popstar was looked at, and it was 2014. So we inter are introducing it this year. So almost 10 years of trialing and research went into this. So these are some of the two most recent in Minnesota, surviving winter temps of 35 below and 19 below. And this is the flower set that came after that. So again, super, super important, especially for those of you uh, garden centers selling in colder climates. This plant will bloom and rebloom, even for those of us up into zone four. Wow, that's that's something else. That's great, and that's typically what the endless summer brand has been able to do. Yep, so absolutely, this. and sort of to be able to have this and have this many flowers on this compact of a plant again in an area where we do nothing. I also have had this at my house, and you know, like that adage, "The cobbler's kid has no shoes." I really don't spend a whole lot of time in my landscape. I plant stuff. And if it survives, cool. If not, it goes. Right. And it, same thing here. I planted uh, these a few years ago and it blooms and reblooms its head off. Wow. Look at that. So the other thing that is really important about this that really sets it apart is that it is genetically compact. It's only going to get 18 to 36 inches. This is one that's been established in the landscape in our at our breeding facility in Georgia for a number of years and it really does stay small. We actually did a, a container production test 
to see how it performed um, next to like Twist and Shout, which is also a lace cap in the Endless Summer collection. And they were both same liner, planted at the same time, and uh, just let it grow like it would in production. And it stayed almost looking exactly like this in the pot. And again, similar to what we did with those trials in Minnesota, do nothing to it. We just let them go. And it stayed that little perfect mound covered in flowers. So to be able to have this, it, it gives it a different place in the landscape. So again, for garden centers, thinking about how you talk about this and how you merchandise it, Twist and Shout is a fabulous lace cap plant. Blooms like crazy, but it's a bigger plant. It's great, you know, the back of a border, foundation plant. This is going to stay that, you know, a couple feet tall. So great in the front of the border or putting it in a deco pot and using it to draw people down a, a pathway is a great way to, to utilize this plant and a way to differentiate it when you're talking about how to sell it in the garden center. And that was one thing I wanted to to mention too. You Beat me to it. Last year, we saw it in containers, mixed containers, yeah. and um, or standalone containers too. And and we're starting to see more of that trending. I think in the consumer area where they want to have a hydrangea in a container. So yeah, there's been a lot of research that that we have been looking at um, over the last couple of years, and the home gardener embracing using shrubs in containers, like there's more of a connection there. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk with garden centers, especially with a plant like Popstar, and we talk about merchandising, put them right next to each other, help connect those dots because this plant genetically does stay small enough where it can come back year after year. So having that selling point of that long-term use in a container, but then putting them with the pot, with the soil, with the fertilizer, with the soil amendment. So like you see here, the different colors, if you want to help teach them that that can happen, um, putting them all there, one, is just going to help support that that consumer, that home gardener, but two, is going to raise your, uh, your ticket that you're selling them mm -hmm. that day. So it's a win-win for everyone. Here, you know, this, this idea of easy to grow, uh, we talk about with both the trade and with the home gardener because... Again, a lot of trialing has gone into this, and if it's not a good grower, it's not a good plant for a grower, it's not going to ever make it to market. So it has to be really good from the beginning all the way through the landscape. Mm -hmm. And this, again, is our uh, production uh, trials down in Georgia, and David is the first to admit they're not production people. They are they are breeders. So if they can get a crop to look like this, not being a grower every single day, of course they can grow plants, but that's not their job. If they can get this to happen, it's going to be great for the grower. And then to have that performance in the landscape is just that much better for a home gardener. Because again, a lot of people want to sort of like set it and forget it a little bit. Like what can I put in that's easy enough to... To, to have in the garden, give me flowers, give me color, give me texture without having to spend all those hours in there maintaining it. So to have that and then have that that versatility between that, that bright pink, that electric blue color, mm -hmm. and then the different uses of it in the landscape. We talked about containers and a special guest with her <laughs> very own cut flower arrangement that she made herself. That's um, right. Being able to use it in all of these different places is just another great benefit of having a plant that does bloom and rebloom like crazy. That amazing color and that small size allows it to fit in so many different parts of the landscape that it's great for consumers um, in so many different areas that uh, there's a lot of fun that you can have in marketing a, a new plant like this. Absolutely. And so this picture is me, obviously, from <laughs> New York City when Bailey did their event to invite um, consumer media and trade media. So we got to go out to New York and learn more about Popstar. Um, and then we got to do our own bouquets with the Popstar flower and then a couple other flowers with it. And, you know, it really showed how strong the stems are to be able to stand up to those mixed bouquets that you can use in your home, you know, so your consumer can, you know, have it out in the landscape. They can have it in the container. They can cut it for their inside. It's so, yeah, there's a lot of uses for it. 
Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of consumers are looking for. Like, what's a plant that can give me more, that can do more for me without me having to do a lot? And so knowing that it has all of these capabilities, but also knowing that there's been nine years of trialing and testing behind it, like, we're not just going to put something out because it's pretty and because we think it would sell. We have to really, truly believe in it. And to know that we've done all this testing at all of our sites in Georgia and Minnesota. So we have those really disparate temperatures, the West Coast, utilizing our network partners, our licensees all across the country. They do testing for us as well. We have other external trials at universities. Like That is really important that it's a truly a good plant first. And then all this other, the beauty and the, the different versatile, versatile uses for it are all like that, the, the icing on top that make it a really special, uh, exciting new introduction. That's great. So tell us a little bit more. We've got a QR code here for our uh, viewer to shoot. And where is that going to take them? Yeah. So if you've got more questions, if you want help on talking about merchandising, if you need help promoting it, we have tons of videos. We actually have a cool consumer uh a catalog almost. It's almost like a magazine that if, if you want to be able to share this with your home, uh, home gardener customer, uh, that we've got this all like how to use it, where to use it, what to pair it with. All of that is available. We want to make it super easy for everyone in the industry to have a successful launch with Popstar. So you can scan the QR code and that will send me an email and I can help direct you to the, to the right spot to get all the information you need. Great. Thank you so much, Ryan, for joining us thank and you. for sharing all this with us. Thank you. Absolutely. And thank you, viewer, for watching another Trending Now video. On behalf of Ball Publishing, I'm Jen Poland, signing off. <laughs>